Hey everybody, happy busy summer, that's for sure. Welcome, Edgy Tim here, and uh, just want to cut out a little video here. There's been a couple of recent verbal commitments that uh, I wanted to get to. This one in particular, because uh, let's talk about Chris Tarek, Glenbard West, uh, currently ranked, I believe, a three-star by Rivals. Let me check that real quick. Um, uh, whatever they have them ranked, <laughs> it's wrong. I'll get into that. Um, big fan of Chris Tarek. I have been since uh, going back to to basically a sophomore year. Yeah, Rivals has him ranked as a as a three star, five point seven three star, which again is uh, number nine in the state. Not terrible, but uh, hello, Clint Cosgrove. We need to work on that ranking a little bit. Um, I I have felt all along going back to last year around this time that Chris Tarek was a four star, and we'll. I don't want to physically stand on this table, but I will stand on a table and defend him and fight for the fact that uh, this is a young man that I think has a tremendous amount of upside, a tremendous amount of ability, untapped ability and, and, and tools that uh, he's got a real shot of having a very, very solid college career for the Badgers. And uh, again, congratulations to Wisconsin who continues to, uh, Continues to do well in the state of Illinois. I remember doing a story recently with our Wisconsin publisher, John McNamara, talking about Wisconsin's recruiting efforts in the state of Illinois. And I had mentioned to him that I think Wisconsin's always had a strong recruiting effort here. And, and this year is no different than any other year. Um, the Badgers are landing more kids and more higher level kids maybe in this class, but um, Wisconsin does a good job and has done a good job here in the past. And obviously with this class, they continue. So let's talk about Chris Tarek. Um, as I mentioned, ranked as kind of a mid-level three-star by rivals. You know, I think what people don't realize about Chris's recruiting is that he really didn't start picking up legitimate power five higher level offers until probably the first, second week of May during the uh, spring evaluation period. And, I was really surprised, I'll be honest. Um, so, again, I, I think a, a big part of the story behind Chris Tarek's recruiting process is the fact that he put on some COVID weight, put on a lot of COVID weight, let's be honest, um, but was able to come back from that, able to drop quite a bit of weight, went into his spring season, uh, which, again, it, I hate reliving that history because it was such a nightmare, but the state of Illinois didn't play fall football in 2020 because of COVID and the restrictions. We were allowed to play that 2020 fall season in the spring of 21. Make sense? Good. Didn't for me at the time. Still doesn't make sense. So we didn't have a 2020 season. That definitely did not help a kid like Chris Tarek, who would have probably been recruited higher, probably – I think would have drawn more attention and let's be honest um, probably would have been much easier for him to maintain that weight and to avoid the COVID weight gain, what have you. Anyway, um, Tara comes back in the spring. I thought had a very solid spring year. Uh, and then between that spring period going into the, going into the fall again, it, it was a grind, but Tara continued to work hard. Uh, when I saw him, I saw him in the first game of the fall season of 2021 uh, against a team, I believe, Granville from Michigan played in uh, Glen at Glenbard West. Um, I was impressed with Chris. Chris ended up playing both ways in that game. Was he playing too heavy? Yeah, he was probably playing around, I'd say, 320 at the time. But what really impressed me was his durability and his endurance. Um, Chris played both ways. Uh, I think he played both ways for like the entire first half and then which happens a lot at, uh, at, at Glenbard West. They kind of blew things open in the second half. But uh, Chris showed me just a lot and, and continued to show me a lot. And he has for the last couple of years. Um, so he continued to work, continued to work on cutting that weight, uh, really embraced wrestling quite a bit. So wrestling was always a part of his workout regime. And, and again, uh, also played lacrosse this past year. So, again, just a uh, kid worked his butt off. And, and I did, it was just kind of a head scratcher because after seeing him live and what he can do with 320 pounds, you just got to imagine, boy, if he can get down to 290, 285, 290, what he could really do. And and I guess other people didn't see it or didn't notice or didn't really look hard enough. And uh, so it took a long time 
for the Power Fives to finally hop on, and boy, did they. They hopped on in a hurry. And, and again, um, Chris is, I think, I think a, a high-level offensive lineman. Um, great size, great width, uh, pretty athletic, runs well for a kid that big. Um, but it's the other attributes that I love more than anything. He's mean. He really is. He's just a mean, nasty kid when he goes in between the lines. And um, I saw that a handful of times uh, during the fall season of 2021. Just just a great mentality. And coming out of that program, you talk about a great program in Illinois, Glenbark West. Coach Sig, uh, his offensive line coach is, again, just, you know, that program's generated guys like, I don't know, uh, Chris Watt might have heard of him. Uh, you can go up and down the line um, over the years of, of the, the top notch guys that have come out of that program, a lot of them offensive linemen. So, again, Chris, uh, extremely well coached, uh, very fundamentally sound. Probably one of the areas of his game he'll have to continue to work on is his pass pro, but that's not to be expected. Um, that will continue to get better, but I think all the physical tools are there. I think the mentality is there for him, and uh, I really think he wants it, and that's another thing that that sometimes doesn't reflect in the stars. Uh, Chris Tarek loves football, and and he has a motor, and I think just an inner fire that uh, wants to take him to the next level, and I, I think he wanted what his motivation was for a long time was to continue to prove people wrong and say, look, I am a top level lineman whether people see it or not or they don't think it or not he continued to work like uh like he was uh never going to get any offers from anyone so again just love that work ethic and it's perfect i'll be surprised i thought it was going to be iowa uh again i've been fortunate to talk to chris for a long time about his recruiting i know that iowa had some very early draw to him and mentioned a, a handful of visits that he went there he really enjoyed himself but again uh, looked at all of his options, and boy, um, I don't think if you're a lineman, you could ever really turn down Wisconsin or Iowa, quite honestly. Two programs that have a long tradition of uh, generating some high-level talent, especially in the offensive line position. So, again, um, congrats to Chris. Again, as I said, I, I love him as a player. I think Wisconsin's getting a great, great kid, uh, a kid that I think they can continue to, continue to build upon. And, uh you know, uh, can wind up uh, eventually being a, a longer term contributor and starter for the Badgers. So, uh, again, just lots to love and don't dare me. I'll stand up on this on this desk and argue for him. So there you go. Just my thoughts on Chris Tarek. Stand stand by, everybody. It's a busy summer. Lots of commits. We've got another one coming later today from uh, I believe it's Glenbard South uh, wide receiver. Cam Williams is going to make an announcement later today. I think it is. When, I think it's Wednesday. If not, it's coming this week, so there's lots of recruiting news and breaking stuff, so stay tuned. We'll have everything for you here.